That's why I got a response to Phil. It's like an instant answer. Yeah, we'll look at it. I wish you said the same thing. You just keep saying the answer. I'm not going to do it. All right. If we can go ahead and uh, get a motion to come out of recess here for our motion to come out of recess. Second. I have a motion from Councilman Lundin and a second from Order. Councilman Heeman. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries 5-0. So we're going to uh, jump back into E4, the rental inspections. And uh, let's see, where are we at with that? So we basically, we got to the point where the original issue that we had kind of wanted to bring this up about was a, a misunderstanding. And you had said that uh, we'd talked about if we were to bring those back into doing them in-house. So we do not have a permit tech right now. And I was, and the associate planner is not, she was not the one that used to do the rental inspections, right? No. So she was, you know, she's fence and zoning type permits, right? So Correct. And in generally in the past, that position has been doing this, <laughs> the planning commission meetings um, and other planning and zoning duties like site plans, which is the goal of this position. Um, it helps longevity of the position as people are doing more detailed work within the planning um, profession and so that is the goal of this position is to do those like Ryan did in the past if you remember um, and so when the permit tech left that position really ended up absorbing other duties and though we did have permitting leave rental administration has been absorbed by this position and so um, between that and other just regular zoning calls and all the calls for building customer service calls related to building or just quick questions related to any permits, that goes to that position. And so it does take a lot of that position's time um, that were previously done by the permit tech. So I have a question with the building official stuff, that's kind of where we left off. And now with you just talking about the rental inspections, um, there's going to be basically four new apartment buildings that are gonna have to have rental inspections all the time. Um, would that, warrant i mean how much is that going to cost the city for those inspections would it warrant us just hiring someone full time even if the economy is slow and people aren't building um and then you know that building official doesn't have to only do building official things they could do marketing i mean do you spread out some of that if we have to go that route i guess what's it going to cost the city we to do all these rental inspections or mm -hmm. how does that work if we did bring them in-house, we will need, would need a full-time building inspector. So it wouldn't have to be an official, but it would we would want somebody trained in building inspection. But we'd need that if we were to take over back. Rental. So it doesn't yes. make sense to you just hire the big one and be done with it. Um, I think the number of permits that we're getting continues to increase, and most people with the volume that we're seeing in building inspections, it's impossible to have one inspector. Most of the city... and. Yes, we'd have to, if we brought all of it in house, we'd have to have an official. But yes, that's what I'm saying. If we brought all building services, permitting, inspections, houses, all, everything, we would likely need to hire. A, we would have to hire a building official, right? As well as likely another inspector, because we're just getting we're getting too large to just have one. It's part of the burnout issue of having an inspector. So we have a very high volume according to Rum River, of building inspections already comparatively to other cities surrounding us. And so we would need more than one person to fill that position, which is why the value in having Rum River is high because they have a large team that can take that volume on. But what does that, where's the cost on that? It, okay, so say when all these apartments go up and they're all done and there's 160 extra units that have right. to get inspected once a year or whatever it is, how much is that gonna cost? We do inspections biannually, and from my understanding, and you can correct me, maybe, Carrie, if you wanna answer or speak to this, um, not every unit is expected every time. We do a variety, like a handful or something. Yeah, do you wanna? She can speak to this better on what is expected in it since it's her area of expertise. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Council, Carrie Levitsky with uh, Rum River Consultants. Hey, Carrie. Um, I'm vertically challenged, so <laughs> now can you hear me okay? Yes. All right, great. Um, yes, yeah, so your 
uh, rental, your current rental program is on a biennial basis. So it's every two years, license goes out. So we have a cycle A and a cycle B. And all of the rentals within the city are divided between those two cycles. And so every other year, or every two years, properties, property owners that have a rental um, property, whether that's an apartment building or a single family home, renews their license and then it's required to be inspected per your ordinances. Can, okay, what is state statute on this? Do you know? As for, or state, state statute? state requirement, yeah, on rental. There is no state that mandate that requires cities to have a rental licensing program. Two years seems very excessive. Yep. I, it's just my opinion. But it's a random selection, so it's not. For large, large buildings, sales. it's a random And selection. this was in design prior to Rum River coming on. This was your program mm -hmm. before we, we came on. This was created in 2008, and so a lot of the foreclosed houses that we right. had within the city were um, became rentals, and so then there were really poor living conditions. And so when it was at that point, after numerous complaints, that it was decided to create a rental program, a licensing program, to make sure that these houses were up to code. Because we were having the building inspector then go in because of the complaints. That's who handled the complaints at the time, um, all code enforcement. And so would go in and they'd find all these things that were not compliance and really unhealthy conditions because some of these houses sat for a long time and had mold and all these other issues. And so um, to alleviate that, that's when this program was brought forward. And it's pretty typical from my understanding, and Carrie, you can correct me if I'm wrong, to have a two or three year cycle of rental inspections. That is correct. So, quick question. So if it's a lottery system, let's say there's a single house there could be a chance that that it's house not, doesn't... It's not a lottery system for the single family homes. That's a biannual cycle. The lottery system, from my understanding, is just for the larger units. So for our new apartment complexes, they don't inspect 50 units. They inspect that, a that handful, a subset me, of them, and it's never the same ones, just to make sure they're, they can't so, figure so out... So every, every rental house is getting inspected every two years? That's that's way sense. too often. A waste of Sorry. money, I think, and because I'm looking as a private resident, if I had the city want to come inspect my house every two years, oh. and I look at these people who are renting as citizens, and they should have all the rights everybody else has, and to get inspected every two years seems very excessive. I think it should be more complaint based or a lap, or maybe in between tenants, like if they they move out and they get a new lease, maybe between leases, but every two yeah, years. Yeah, but we don't. We have no idea when their leases are, are up, if they leave or not. Then, and, then and make a complaint and, and as to speak, speak on the apartments, my daughter rents an apartment in, in uh, Blaine. She was on the lottery, she was on the lottery system. Her unit got picked. All right, for apartments, that's. But that's, yeah. but, but also, if you're renting, you don't know if your house is, they don't, they, they don't know if their smoke detectors are working. They don't care if they want to check them or not. And that's the whole reason behind the rental agreement. And it really... Well, it, they would go to our website. I mean, we even have things on that inform our residents to make sure their fire alarms and their smoke detectors are... You can think all you want. That's on the person living there. there. It also that works twofold. It's common sense. So it's not only for the renter for their safety, but it's also for the investment of the rental property owner. So the rental property owner oftentimes isn't going into that house unless they are have a complaint or need to fix something, and not all renters do that. And so if there's an issue with that person um, abusing that property in some way, um, it really does give that rental property owner also a leg to stand on in court. Like for instance, if there's a squatter. So all these other things. So it does work twofold. So a lot of rental property owners aren't objecting to rental licensing because of that. So they don't mind paying a fee every two years? I, I don't hear a ton of complaints. So oh, a friend just, of mine has multiple properties in town. They're they actually glad they went through a two-year rather than every year. They, and they had no problem with it. As they, and they have multiple properties in the city of Isani multiple properties in the city of Cambridge. And since we changed that program, they've actually became more friendly with the way I city by Sandy's been operating versus other cities that they have properties in. 
Well, it's just an idea to cut it in half or even more in half and make it every five years and then complaint phase. So if a, if a renter has a, a complaint, call it in. I, I, just I, my yep. opinion. I, Absolutely, I'm just, and you make a great point. And Ms. Hillsheim also pointed out that the purpose, and if you're interested, again, we can provide you with some, we're not advocates for or against, we're just here um, to help out as far as administering your program or just performing the inspections. Sure. And one of the things, it does protect at your the business owners, which if you own rental property, it is it operates like a business, and it does protect their asset by, the, by having a rental licensing program because eviction is extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. And so the rental inspection report is a matter of public record and then that they utilize that to go to court to be able to get problematic tenants out of their property um, and help again protect their asset. Can't we write an ordinance that if an owner wants his property inspected that he can do it at will once a year or if he doesn't, it can go five years. And they have that the choice. Yeah. Option. And they again, I'm choice. just here to speak on yeah. if you had questions regarding um, what's in, in yeah. the packet. We can, I would I mean, defer it's that up, to staff. It's up to the council to decide if there is going to be changes within the rental ordinance. And this is what we currently have and what's been in place since 2008. So sure. since there isn't state statute on it, other than what kind of building codes are required for inhabit or habitable living conditions. Um, that's really, she's here to speak on the administration and mm -hmm. the um, actual rental inspections. I would like to give flexibility to both sides, to the renter and to the, the owner of the rental property. I mean, if we can make it so that like I said, they have the option to maybe even inspect once a year if they want to pay the fee. Otherwise, it's once every five years or something like that. Uh, that would be mandatory. Um, that way, it gets them. See, right now, if, if your explanation is is to get somebody out of there because they're having a problem with the renter and they have to wait two years. Well, why make them wait two? Let's go one. But let's not make it mandatory for five, something like that. It's just... A random thought, I didn't realize there was as much to this it, as, as we were talking about. It would be hard to enforce an at-will rental licensing program because we wouldn't be able to say our ordinance requires something. And at this point, when we have a requirement of two years, it gives us that authority to say you did not abide by our rental licensing policy and therefore can no longer... Um, you know, continue with renting this property and therefore can no longer have a renter living in this property so we can evict them at that point. Without that ability and them just having the uh, at will, they might not let us in. They, you, it, they don't have to let us in if our ordinance doesn't require could, that timeline. Could you give me some examples? Because I can't think of one, but could you give me a couple examples where, where the city would need to go in? Um, we have houses frequently that we need to go, I mean, we have some right now that we, garbage houses, um, other fire issues on houses. We've had houses we haven't been able to get into because of boarding up of windows and other things when people are living in them. Um, I don't know. Those are just a couple that I'm aware of in the last year. <laughs> so. Rodent issues. How, how much is an inspection on a, a rental unit? It's a great, great question. Thank you. Um, like similar to building permit fees, um, rental licensing programs is self-funded, so to speak. So uh, your current um, fees, I believe, are. Sorry, not to hijack that conversation. I think we can we can probably talk about that at a later date. We we should ask her the questions that we need now. I think we should have that on the, an agenda item or talk about it tonight. Or 
And if any of you would like any information, we can provide that as far as, you know, reasoning and things like that. We've been doing, um, we do this for multiple jurisdictions, sure. and um, many jurisdictions do require the rental licensing. It doesn't mean that you have to. You guys all can approve your own policies and, and ordinances, but um, yes. Um, currently, your rental fees that you adopted, I believe last fall, is for single family, it's 160 per unit every two years. Multi-family is $250 per building and $65 per unit. And if we took on that administrative piece, we would be proposing, so right, and right now we do receive a percentage of that. In order to have that cost, we would be proposing um, a, an incremental uh, increase, but that's down the road as far as what we can discuss. Mm -hmm. um, so $160, for instance, per year, divided by 24, that would be the approximate cost per month for a rental property owner to maintain their license. So roughly $7 a month per unit. So if you have a, a single family house that has three units in it, there's, yeah. But three I've never units, had anybody yep. complain that, that has rental properties complaining about that. The only sure. complaint they had is what they were told they were have to do, which ended up being a misunderstanding at that point. That was the only complaint I had, I've heard, ever Correct. heard. Never had a complaint about how much it was. Correct, okay. our, only two, it was. our only two complaints we've had recently were the, the lock and then that complaint, and both were um, the same oh, property owner as well as the two different units, but one was a miscommunication, like we said, and then we adjusted the ordinance to allow for the lock, so. That was the only other complaint. I've Otherwise, heard. I've heard zero complaints. Actually, rental complaints are very minimal. Minimal. I haven't. I think those are the two of the only ones I've heard since I've been here in the last three years. Are those costs pretty typical? Are those costs pretty typical? They're a little low. A little low. Okay. So is a that low, why? Not much. Okay. But they're 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 they are, We would be we would be um, uh, proposing a slight increase. Yes. Okay. Roughly. Um, it's in here, so the single family. Um, so it de would depend on that percentage. So yeah. in the contract on page, in your packet, I believe it's page 33, page 11, on the example contract that I provided, we would be proposing doing full administration. And what that, what full administration means is we would do everything, we would be running in the background. And staff would only have to um, uh, you know, process the payments. And once baseline, which at the beginning of the year, baseline's rental licensing, which is the software that um, you use for your permitting, uh, as of the first of the year for the re next rental licensing cycle, um, it would be going through baseline so people could pay online just like they do their building permits now. Um, so that cost, we would need to, the minimum that Rum River would need to collect in order to have that be commensurate with the service provided, again, similar to building permits, and be able to cover our costs would be 170 a unit. And so if you still wanted to maintain the 15% revenue that you currently do, your um, single family dwelling rental units would need to go up to $200 versus 160, which is approx it equates approximately to about a dollar 40 or so a month increase over that two 24 month cycle. I think it should, whatever direction we go, it definitely needs to pay for itself. And yes. this, this, this program that's before you this evening is, is at no, no cost, nothing, um, no cost to your citizens. And that 15% that we retain currently goes for paying um, a portion of the current, the salaries of my department. So 
administration side. You would still retain a percentage. And that, none okay. of that goes on the taxpayer. That goes on the rental, those yep. rental property owners. Yep. So that's, which is, that's up to them. Which is also why it's important to have a rental program because if we don't have this licensing and we do start getting a large number of complaints, that's on the taxpayer to pay for those complaints. So sure. in this way, we're, pre I mean, it, it's preventing it. a minor cost really to save the taxpayers money. So the overall taxpayers on people who are making money off of these properties. So Mike, I guess <clears throat> this wasn't really the conversation that I was planning on having when I brought this onto the, onto the agenda. So, <laughs> but, uh, but you did provide some information here. It looks like is, is we're not paying anybody right now to do this job specifically. It's just part of the existing jobs that we have. So, so who are we going to cut to save these dollars? Because that's, I guess I'm not understanding. There's not really a savings there. It's just there would be time where, where somebody would be able to spend on something else. That's a comparison but of it's hiring not, a full-time staff versus... It's not a work. savings to us, but it is... We're in my department right now. We don't have time to do all of the things that we need to do. So that's why without having the permit tech there and absorbing these duties, like this position and myself have not been able to do econo any economic development, um, community development stuff. I haven't been able to attend a lot of meetings that I should be attending um, because I'm covering um, some of the role of what the associate planner should be doing while they're covering this administration. And so um, it wouldn't be cutting anything. It just would be, as we're growing, we have more things just continuously put on our plates. And this is one of the things that would allow, one way that it would allow us without costing the taxpayers more money, a way to you know, distribute some of those duties. Mm -hmm. But we don't, Mike, do you want to touch on that maybe? So that's what I'm, I guess I'm saying, I mean, are we planning on hiring some, a permit technician on the next year's uh, budget? Because I don't know that that's what no, we've that's, talked about. No, that's that. not in the budget, but that is, okay. staff's thought is, is like this, it's kind of like we're at the margin where this can't go on forever. Right. Kind of thing. Um, you know, eventually people are not, residents are not going to get the service that they've come to expect. Um, in, in considering this, the, probably the one thing that I would interject that hasn't been said, but I'm sure I've said this to probably at least three out of the five council members, is the most expensive thing that a city can do is hire a full-time person. Like, it, you hire somebody full-time for 10 years, it is, it's a million bucks. And when you have these opportunities where you can contract it out, it needs to be seriously considered. Um, you know, it works for them to do this because they gain economies of scale as they diversify their portfolio among jurisdictions, right? The more jurisdictions they have and the more services they provide, the bigger they are as an organization and the better that they can then pay all those individual people. But, you know, cities have to hire staff periodically, but when there's an opportunity to just contract it out, I, I think generally that's a good idea. And we do have a great working relationship with Rum River. As staff, we have no issues with reaching out to either of these two or any of the inspectors. Um, but just my two cents on that. So we're not planning on hiring somebody, but it's, if, you're, if you're just saying the savings is on time spent that we can spend on other things. And, and I mean, it really, realistically, it's gonna cost more though for the rental inspections in order to offload this workload from you guys to to rum river correct and we likely will have to rehire a permit tech in the next few years just because our workload is increasing substantially with more houses within our city we're getting more zoning permits every day so right. it just so continues to increase. save forty five thousand as this mm -hmm. kind of is presented it's it's just a it's just a cost so, comparison. Yes. I get what you're saying. And, and it should also be noted is... No, we're not spending the 45000 anyway. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So and, it's, and not, that, it's not an actual savings is all I'm pointing out, that the people that own the rental properties are going to pay more, and we don't actually realize the savings, but at the same time, they're going to pay a little bit more, like you said, what, a dollar twenty-four? $1.40, she said. $1.40 a month. Uh, 
Awesome. But I kind of like George. I mean, if you're thinking you want to go, you know, maybe they have to pay more when they get an inspection, but have to get it less often. I mean, maybe that's a, a compromise there too. So, yeah. a three-year requirement maybe. Because you may not see a cost savings, but the staff will be actually be able to do their duties. Yeah, so it'll, I, I like the idea that it's well, I mean, taking I still, the burden I mean, off the taxpayers. We could combine the two ideas. I mean, still yep. we could pass it along to Rum River, and we could and we could do do oh, it less often yeah, so absolutely. that it doesn't doesn't add a ton of cost to the people that own the rental properties, but it, it does offload the work from the city mm -hmm. so that everybody wins. Um, yeah, combination between the two. I would say that we'd have to find the fine line because at some point extending rental inspections to five years allows for more findings mm -hmm. <laughs> in an inspection. Sure. So there is a little bit of value. I would say three years would be three. what I would recommend then if you're gonna extend it and no longer because when you get to five, we do have a lot more like fire safe, like fire alarms will be expired every time almost then. So at the two year, we're at least giving people the next, you know, you give them a notification ahead of that expiration date. So just keeping things like that in mind, if you, even in your own house, you know, goes fast, but you realize, oh, if I'm gonna need to do this now because it's been so long. So I think just. Then do we need to raise, I mean, above that, so they have 170 kind of in here. I mean, do, if we're not doing any of the administrative work, do we really need to raise it up to cover that, to, to keep that 15% coming in for our own costs? I mean, there's other, some other costs, I mean, processing payments, I think Carrie had mentioned, and some other things, but I mean, is that. Yeah, I mean, there, there is still work in City Hall so that it has to occur no matter it what. To more like that and 200 to make sure we're covering. Yeah, and even if things go perfectly smooth and nobody in City Hall ever gets a single call about any rental property ever, finance staff is still going to spend time every single month going through reconciling this stuff mm -hmm. every single month. And, you know, if it's in-house, um, that becomes simply a function of payroll rather than actually reconciling. But yeah, so there is, there is going to be work no matter what. Carrie and Andy, I mean, can you handle, I, mean, I have had one, one person that does a lot of work complain that it's hard to get a hold of you guys sometimes and that kind of thing, and I don't know, I mean, is that something that you guys are, are staffed to be able to handle and that, that we're going to be able to, you know, and it's, like I said, it's only one or two people maybe that have come, so I mean, it's not many, so I mean, I'm not trying to throw you out of the bus or anything, not but. At all. But I just want to make sure that if we were to pass that along to you guys, that you guys could handle that workload. And thank you for that. Yes, our offices are located just in St. Francis, and we've been, uh, we've really struck a really good stride as far as that public-private relationship, being able to support staff from different different jurisdictions as well as is the the staff that we've uh, provided in Plymouth with. You know, right now we uh, we support 30 some families already. Yeah. So I do feel very comfortable and confident that we can respond to these needs. Yes. Okay. So I did, I did some rough math here, and at $160 right now, divided by 24 months, it's $6.66 a month. If we do, if we up the charge to $200 every 36 months, so every three years, it's $5.55. Mm -hmm. So they would actually be saving $1.11 a month while we increase the fee, but lower the, qual the, the yearly requirement yeah. to three. Yeah. And it takes all the pressure off the staff, so. Oh, and yeah, the taxpayers, so now, we don't have to have a staff person that's paid for by taxpayers. This will be paid paid for directly by the people that rent the, the units out. Which it should be. Yeah. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Okay, what is it? You don't like the three year Andy on that. I, I still think it should have stayed with the two, but that's fine. I mean, I, 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 don't, I definitely don't want to see you eliminate this. No. This, well, could we? Home and inspection. You're opening up a big can of worms. And I think I like the idea too, George. Like you said, I mean, if people could have For a choice request. on how long, but I think that gets to be complicated. Well, could we? And I think it's just three years is kind of a happy medium there. I think. And, could we and do uh, three years, or if they want it more, rent more? I'm going to guarantee you the renter, the land own, the owners, they're not they're not going to want it. Well, there any, might be. They're not going to want it any sooner. So if you're going to go to three years, you're going to go to three years. You don't muddy I, up the waters by saying yeah. if you want. Okay. Let's, I agree. I think we send out reminders, so we give so much time. We send out annual reminders when it's that cycle's turn. And so figuring out if then, if we go to three years, it will likely end up being three cycles. Mm -hmm. Could, so, could a, a, a renter private pay you guys to come out and do a rental inspection outside of this? Mm -hmm. I mean, if say if there was a, 
a landlord that wanted to have a rental inspection in a, a year when a, when a tenant left, could they private pay or reach out to you guys, or how does? Yeah, that. that, that's a, another okay. great question, Councilman Merrill, but um, we're under contract with the city of Isani, okay. and we need to follow your ordinances um, as a representative of the city while we're out in the field. Do people offer private building inspections, or I suppose they could just do that themselves, too? They can hire private building. They okay. can choose to hire. You can get a building inspection of your home at any time. Okay. Yeah, we wouldn't do that, though. We wouldn't offer that service. Uh, in, in my opinion, it would be a perceived conflict of interest or sure. even a direct conflict of interest, being that we are the designated building official and um, do the rental inspections currently. Okay. So I think the consensus would be move the, the rental inspections to every three years instead of every two. Hire Rum River consultants to handle that and raise the fee to somewhere around the neighborhood of $200. Mike can put an actual number on it and make sure we still get that 15% to cover administrative costs, but then that should uh, offload that from your plate, so, right? And I think, uh, I think everybody can be satisfied with that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I'll bring it back to council um, in one of the upcoming meetings once we work everything out, and then we'll make the effective date after that point. That so. sounds good. And then the deck inspections, like we talked about, if you guys can come back with that next month, and we'll we'll look at the or the uh, not inspections, area, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. So, thank you guys for coming in. I appreciate you thank being you. here to answer those questions. So, and thanks for for all your help. So, all right. Well, why don't we uh, get a motion to put the committee of the whole under recess, and we'll probably jump back into this after our uh, budget workshop. Uh, motion session. to recess. Second. I have a motion to recess from Councilman Merrill and a second from Councilman Holmgren. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. That motion carries 5-0. So we will jump back into that.